Evolution is a term to define only one organism, and that's the self. The self is the universe, the self is the alpha and omega, God and infinity. And that's the only thing that evolves, because we are all part of the self. Nothing goes through an evolutionary process alone, or without direct benefit to the whole. So when you begin to think that there's this controlling elite, this controlling hand behind the curtains leading the planet to destruction, when you think the end is near, the apocalypse, Armageddon, and when you think we as a species are doomed, it is not they, it is you that brought this about. And for a very good reason. You are evolving. Stop blaming everybody and everything else. Quit panicking about global tyranny and natural disaster and pay attention. Because the world is telling you something. It's telling you exactly what is wrong with you and how to fix it. The Earth is believed to have formed 4.6 billion years ago. Within the first 150 million years, it began cooling and releasing gases from the lithosphere, which created the earliest forms of the Earth's atmosphere. Prior to the creation of this atmosphere, the Sun's ultraviolet radiation made for uninhabitable conditions. But as the Earth cooled further, water condensed in the atmosphere, and oxygen accumulated making way for organic compounds. This spawns single-celled organisms and then plant life. And down through time the evolutionary chain continued. And then we arrive at a species that does not seem to fit as well as the rest. Homo sapiens gestation period of nine months mimics the 3.8 billion year evolution of all life on earth. The human embryo repeats the evolution of all species. When the sperm and egg unite, this new creation is a single-celled organism. Within hours, this single cell divides and multiplies more rapidly than any other species. Four weeks later, the embryo begins to develop gills mimicking aquatic life. A few weeks later, it develops lungs and a tail with reptilian appearance. From there, a mammal is recognizable and then onto a primate form. It then sheds its laguna, which is the embryonic fur, and at last, shows the characteristics of a human child. The human body is a community of approximately 50 trillion cells. Everything the body does, the cell does as well. Cells have respiratory and excretory systems. They feed, feel, think, and communicate with other cells. Trillions of cells make up a single organism called the human body, and billions of human bodies help make up the organism we call Earth. The Earth has more similarities with the human anatomy than you may think. Earth has its own electromagnetic generation, just like the human body. Research has found that a direct current of electricity flows through perineural cells found around every nerve in the body. These pathways are called energy meridians and have been used in the practice of acupuncture for at least 2,000 years. Dating even farther back is the notion of dragon paths or ley lines in which many megalithic structures and stone monuments were erected, marking the energy meridians of the earth. These energy meridians are generated by the resonant frequencies of the earth, 
called the Schumann waves. Each planetary body has its own resonant frequencies and is determined by the circumference and diameter as well as the speed of orbit and rotation. The Earth's resonant frequency starts at 7.83 Hz and ends with the seventh harmonic at 43.2 Hz, correlating with the seven chakras. Ultimately, the greatest discovery of our Earth is its consciousness. A visible attribute of consciousness is an energetic field that governs the shaping of organisms. Morphogenesis is a scientific term to explain this very shaping of tissues, organs, and entire organisms. Consciousness is the creative force of the entire universe. It has been given many names such as God, Yahweh, Krishna, nature, the field, and divinity. The entire universe is in fact a single living conscious organism with complete awareness of itself. The reason why it may seem difficult to comprehend this is because our understanding is typically limited by our language. When we hear the term conscious organism, we tend to anthropomorphize its definition. By giving it human qualities, we mistakenly look past what an organism truly is in the first place. The definition of an organism is any living thing capable of response to stimuli, reproduction, growth and development, and maintenance of homeostasis as a stable whole. Our universe does all of these things. The consciousness of our universe is responsible for the form and purpose that all matter assumes. The Earth's resonant frequencies are a result of its form. These frequencies are responsible for biological rhythms such as menstrual and circadian cycles as well as behavioral and emotional patterns. The frequencies are then picked up by the flora and fauna which are biological instruments that respond to the wave patterns. The wave patterns resonate in the cranial structure of our head and converge in the center of our brain which is where we find the pineal gland. The pineal gland is believed in many cultures to be the spiritual third eye responsible for intuition. Descartes called it the seat of the soul where mind and body meet. Each individual cell in our body receives an electromagnetic impulse from our central nervous system. They receive the very same impulse that was disseminated to every biological instrument from the earth. An explanation of our conscious universe has been attempted by religion, science and philosophy. The neglect of biological nature from any organism causes illness. A divorce from nature, exile from Eden, confounding of tongues, they are all symptoms not of a biblical God or deity, but the true self. The greatest and only threat to ourselves is a loss of self, the death of our divinity. As we barrel through history with oceans of information, yet barely a drop of wisdom, we have to understand how we lost ourself. In sacred texts and ancient scriptures left by our ancestors, we find an incredible link between stories of creation, a great flood, the war of the gods, the Messiah dying for the sins of man, end time prophecies and similar characters. These correlations show up in myths from cultures that supposedly had no contact with one another due to distance in geography and time. Due to distance in geography and time. The common thread we find that connects all of mythology has its roots in the stars. One of the most revealing accounts is the battle of the gods in heaven and the ensuing flood. In the Bible, Lucifer rivaled the Lord and was defeated and cast down to earth. In the creation myth of the Enuma Elish, we find a similar story of Tiamat being defeated by Marduk and cast down to the abyss of Apsu. In chaos, Tiamat, the mother of them both, Apsu and Tiamat's waters were mingled together. Meaning that the chaotic waters of Tiamat were somehow mixed with the sweet waters of Apsu. Apsu was the Sumero Akkadian god of the abyss beneath the earth. Tiamat, also known as Lucifer, was known as a serpent or dragon and was defeated by Marduk. Marduk was the father of Nebo or Mercury. And Mercury is the same mythological character as the Zoroastrian Mithra, the Egyptian Hermes Anubis, and the Gnostic Hermes Christos. 
The most recent version of Mercury, however, is the Archangel Michael in the Bible, who defeated Lucifer and sent him to the abyss of the earth, or hell. This story is steeped in astrological significance in the Bible and in many other ancient scriptures. This leads to an event in history that is recorded by many researchers regarding the cosmic upheaval and historic deluge.